that. So next talk, thank you, Ashika. Next talk is uh, the open source models in satellite communications presented by um, LF Terrius, right? Yeah, right. So LF is the vice chairman of the Libre Space Foundation. is uh, present everywhere in the community. Every time I travel, even to Shanghai, people knows him. That's kind of a uh, crazy person. So. Uh, he's obviously in projects and giving a helping hand to everybody wearing uh, uh, to, to I mean to everybody and uh, and his talk is about one of those projects in the Libre Space Foundation the OpenSatcom which is done together with the European Space Agency so LF the screen is yours hey guys uh, I'll need a sec for that Uh, Are you presenter? Am I presenter? Yeah, not yet. Let me just make you presenter. And you are presenter. Perfect. There you go. Okay. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, Open Satcom, uh, which is actually... Uh, which is uh, actually... Um, uh, an initiative, uh, an activity of the European Space Agency, uh, implemented uh, by Libre Space Foundation and our friends at France uh, in a cube. Uh, so, um, the activity project uh, focuses on evaluating open source modules, uh, open source development modules uh, in uh, satellite communication. Uh, it identifies uh, open source project related uh, to such uh, to that mission, and uh, also coordinates some activity to increase the impact uh, of open source uh, in satellite communications. We'll check about that uh, in a few minutes. So the idea is that first thing is to for the person is to understand first and foremost. Uh, how, what are open source modules? Because they are not just uh, the good old uh, open source development methodologies that uh, uh, you idealize the uh, open source solution and uh, you develop it and then you uh, market it and then maintain it, etc., etc. But you have to take into account licensing considerations, legal considerations. Uh, the re your revenue model and uh, the community aspect. Um, by choosing a license, your model uh, will be impacted, either community-wise or uh, technology-wise, maybe sometimes, and uh, especially revenue-wise. So uh, you have to also take into account that. Although open standards are key uh, towards uh, an open ecosystem, uh, it should be coupled, uh, it should be coupled uh, with open licenses and governance in order to have the extreme effect of open source. Um, nowadays, we all know that open source is the basis of uh, many technological stacks. Uh, you can, uh, uh, on the notes of this presentation, actually uh, have a link to uh, a study we performed uh, during uh, this uh, activity in order to define what kind of uh, technological uh, stacks are affected by open source today. Uh, so, uh, an open ecosystem and not only promotes standardization, which is not normal if you think about it, uh, but also promotes open implementation. So makes it easier for a new company, organization, a team, a university uh, to get uh, into the industry. Um, we know that uh, nowadays, Open source uh, business models, models of generating revenue, being sustainable, 
are evolving continuously. Uh, and there are great debates about how they should go forward and how they shouldn't. Uh, we can discuss them all day if you want to. Uh, but a key for viability can be governance. A good example for this, one of my favorite examples is Blender 3D. Uh, Blender is a, a project uh, to edit 3D objects. Uh, it was, if I recall correctly, friends. Um, the company was going down, but the project was used, the software was used by a lot of people. So they did the crowdfund, they bought the IP, and uh, they released it under an open source license. It's now one of the most uh, uh, sustainable uh, open source projects around. They're, they're huge. Uh, success is not also restricted if you want to measure success of an uh, open source project. Uh, you don't have to restrict uh, yourself on uh, the maximization of profit because open source intrinsically uh, generates and distributes value. Um, uh, yeah, one of the one of my favorite um, diagrams that we shared on that report is that an open ecosystem actually um, provides for more standardization and more innovation and um, allows uh, new entrants to enter the game, uh, new people to do stuff. We've seen it uh, in the server domain with uh, open source, and we believe that we can see it uh, in the space domain uh, with what uh, the people uh, attending this conference can do. Uh, we identified around seven uh, open source development modules and uh, if you want to say uh, business models, they are not exactly business models because they include um, considerations on licensing and on uh, community. Uh, usually, uh, most of them, one of the most uh, uh, prominent ways to do open source right now is business to business, uh, like Android does or a couple of that. That was mentioned a little bit ago. Uh, okay, uh, control ecosystem like uh, WordPress and Satnox, maybe I don't know. Uh, common upstream ecosystem like OpenSSL or Orkit. Um, ethically open source projects like Diaspora, uh, good old friends uh, Polyastro. Um, open hardware uh, projects like Arduino, Hakarev, uh, opportunistic open source like. Uh, Called apps from uh, big organizations, governments, uh, etc. Mass market open source. Good old uh, Firefox and Flickr, for example. Anyway, uh, we took these models and we wondered how actually are applied to satellite communications. But we ha first had to define satellite communication domain. So we have Comes payload domain and uh, test integration in space. We have uh, design and analysis in the mid and uh, ground segment and user segment technologies and downstream uh, applications uh, on the ground segment. So um, we did survey several projects and we found out that uh, the development uh, methodologies they use are. It's, I will go really fast because Marthos will uh, start saying that we don't have enough time. I totally suggest that uh, people uh, check out the report. So, what we did the identified uh, the around uh, 68 software projects. 
just three hardware projects, um, three standards that we could use, and uh, more over the thing we did identify is that uh, from the projects uh, uh, we surveyed and we focused on uh, the, oh thanks a lot yeah red, red uh, is giving out a link uh, on the chat on openshotcom uh, dot org. Uh, that will uh, allow for a better understanding of all the projects we identified. Note that some might not be actually open source, and that's an issue we identified, uh, but they're included uh, in order to find out how the industry uh, is going. But the vast majority of the projects we surveyed are open source. So, um, taking the, all these into account, we created the website and released the report, and we are on uh, the process of uh, doing uh, bounty support for open source uh, satellite communications projects. If you have some good ideas, a, a good defined bar that you like to share on a satellite communication project, that's open source me or Keros or Mantos, we are around. And uh, uh, all it is, uh, uh, is working on a constellation definition designer. Uh, and we are going to work on a survey and adoption expectation on how people are taking into account the uh, open source in satellite communication. Uh, that's all from me. I'd like to hear your questions, ideas, input, whatever. Thanks a Thanks lot, Elif. Thanks a lot. I shared the link to your report. Thanks. And uh, I hope you don't hear me twice. Oh, hear me twice. I have a little bit of echo. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Um, and then I made you presenter, uh, Mantos, so you can do your magic in the backstage. Uh, so, LF, maybe we, we would have some some questions uh, around here. I always like those projects where you're actually trying to fill the gaps. Uh, here it's uh, in, uh, in in satellite communication. Um, you know, you've seen like when you want to build a fully open source uh, uh, CubeSat, you know, you have to go through software, but also through hardware. Uh, is it also something you're covering in all those projects? Indeed. Um, uh, I, would, I suppose that the most important thing and, uh, is to find out uh, a way uh, to understand that open source makes sense and uh, makes sense especially for big organizations that are working on space uh, because it can provide solutions and a, a very good framework for collaboration a very effective framework indeed, indeed, for collaboration yeah. uh, if there are any questions uh, i will be more than happy to answer them uh, All right. anyway you'll be around the two days uh, lf if i understand mm -hmm. right and and even more you're on all the channels uh, here and there so from uh, that, that's projects to um, almost omnipresent. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Elif Thanks. Mm -hmm.